What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Realms of Metal. Eddie here, back with you from my happy place, my metal room here in the woods in PA. What's going on, man? It is Sunday. It's the last day of my three-day weekend. It's a bummer. But, uh, you know, I'm having some fun here, listening to some records, and uh, I was going through some questions. I figured we'd do another Q&A today. And actually, I only have a three-day work week next week, and I'm off Thursday, Friday, and the weekend, so... Back to work for three days, and I'm off for another four days, man. I'll take that shit. I need it. I gotta be honest with you. Uh, what's going on? Islanders, Devils today. Big game. Islanders are like three points out of a playoff spot. They got probably a dozen games to go in the season. It's crunch time. They got to win. They beat the Jets uh, yesterday. It was, it was a big win. Got to beat the Devils today. The Devils really surprised me after what they did last year. The Devils are actually behind the Islanders in the standings by like three points right now. So it's a huge game for both teams. And, uh, you know, Islanders are just so inconsistent. It's like ridiculous. Like they'll play well and then they go on a losing streak and it just, you know, they're consistently inconsistent. It's a tough, it's a tough team to watch. I got to be honest with you right now. So they won last night. Let's see if they win today and keep it going. So go Islanders. Um, Watched a couple of movies, not so great. You know, uh, we watched this movie last night called Primal with Nicolas Cage. You know, and let it be known that my wife picked that movie. All I did was click on it and let the trailer play. And she's like, oh, okay, I'll watch this. I'm like, okay, this is your pick, you know, because I'm on such an impressive streak with picking good movies. Her streak, not so much. You know, she's, you know, a lot of... uh a lot of picks that just aren't very good from her side. <laughs> Primal is terrible. <laughs> it had Nicolas Cage in it. He's like this hunter. He's hunted this tiger and it's being transported on a ship. And it was just a terrible movie. Terrible acting. That woman, uh, Famke Jansen was in it. You know, the woman from the X-Men movies, Jean Grey. She was in uh, like Taken and uh, the remake of House on Haunted Hill she was in. She was in that. And she looks completely different, man. Like she had so much work done to her face. You can barely even recognize who the hell she is. Like, I don't know why these actresses feel the need to do that in Hollywood. You know, she was, you know, she's a beautiful lady. You know, we all, we all get older. Now she doesn't even look the same as she did. Like she looks completely different. You know, it's, it's crazy. But uh, actually my wife did pick a good movie last weekend. We watched the holdovers with Paul Giamatti. That was pretty good. And then I finally got around to watching Thanksgiving a couple weeks ago. And uh, that's when I missed the boat on. And I, I actually enjoyed that. I think I saw that on Netflix. And uh, I like the creative ways that the guy did all the killings, the Thanksgiving style, you know, killings with the ears for the fucking corn, you know, and the fucking girl's ears and the woman in the oven. That was pretty good. Uh, but I enjoyed that. The ending was kind of cliche. And I won't spoil it for you in case you didn't see it, but, you know, the guy who ends up being the killer is, you know, kind of stupid, you know, should have been something better than that. But I enjoy, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed the killings in that. It had kind of like a scream kind of vibe to it where they were like implying that different people were the killers or there could have been multiple killers. And it just ended up being I won't I won't spoil it for you. You can watch it, but we watch that. What have I picked up? Uh, I got the uh, Bride of Frankenstein figure. It was the only one I was missing. And uh, now I got all these universal figures. You got Frankenstein, Bride, uh, Dracula, and the creature. I love the creature. The creature has always been my favorite, you know, classic uh, universal monster. And uh, these things are great, man. So now I got that collection. What have I picked up in the last little bit? I've got, um, everybody knows this band, Artillery. This is the first Artillery record. Fear of Tomorrow, I think it came out in, what, 1985 on Neat Records. Found it at a decent price. This is actually a double vinyl. This was a 2017 reissue on Wax Maniacs, and it's transparent blue. And uh, Artillery is an important band. Somebody asked me a question on one of the other videos about Artillery. He said he was a big fan. I've actually never even seen Artillery live, but they're coming through next month, not too far from me here in PA. And I'm going to go. 
a couple of friends of mine are going to go with me. I'm going to check out artillery. Never seen them before, so I'm excited for that. So I've been, you know, putting them in my rotation. And uh, what better way to start with the first artillery record, you know, here tomorrow. And these are nice, man. It's just transparent blue, double vinyl. It's got some extra tracks on here. It's got the whole record and it's got uh bonus tracks 1985 demo out of the sky fear of tomorrow and hey woman so artillery man here's another one that i picked up here's a band called malformity the name of the record is called monumental ruin this came out in 2021 it's their only full length looks like this was a split release between unspeakable acts and dark descent and uh, this is like straight up, you know, classic death metal. Uh, I really love this band. Um, this is a great record. It reminds me of a lot of um, some of the Florida bands, like maybe like a like a brutality kind of vibe, a resurrection kind of vibe. Maybe throw some monstrosity in there too. Uh, I love the vocals. I think two of the two members actually switch off on the vocals on this, if I'm not mistaken. Love the vocal style and the vocal approach got that classic sound uh it's like an old school vibe on this I, I love this record a lot malformity and they are from uh atlanta georgia so this is the coke clear with black swirl 300 copies of these so pretty hot you can see that right hell yeah malformity check them out So what are we doing? We're doing some questions today. I got some questions at the realms of metal at gmail.com. Let's go through them. Let's have some fun. And uh, let's see what we got here. So let's go to Greg from Pennsylvania. What are some of your guilty pleasures that you've been listening to lately? Uh, Hails from Pennsylvania. Loving the channel. Thank you. Um, believe it or not, I've been listening to all kinds of stuff lately. Like I have, I've been throwing on some like old Marilyn Manson. Say what you want about Marilyn Manson. I, you know, I know he's got some personal shit going on right now, and uh, I'm not going to even attempt to delve into that. I have no idea what actually happened or or, or what went on. He is kind of a shady dude, I hear. Uh, kind of a deviant, I hear. So, uh, but I'm going to put that, that to the side. I do like some of the old Marilyn Manson stuff. I actually saw him. I saw him a few times over the years, but the first time I saw him was that first Ozfest in '97. I remember there was like a lot of controversy to that. They like I saw it at Giant Stadium and they didn't want Marilyn Manson to play. And then Ozzy Osbourne said, oh, f Marilyn Manson is not playing and I'm not playing. So I, there was a big hoopla about that. But that was the first time I saw him back in 97. I've seen him a few times over the years. And, you know, I I like some of his older stuff. There's, you know, it's hit and miss with me, but he has written some really great stuff like, you know. The Beautiful People, Reflecting God, uh, The Speed of Pain, Great Big White World, Dope Show, Disassociative, the Reflecting God. Like that, he's writing some really good stuff. So I've been listening to that here or there. Uh, I had Bon Jovi Slippery when went on the other day, and my wife actually caught me listening to it. She's like, Are you listening to Bon Jovi? I'm like, No, no, just go, just go. Uh, some old AFI, if you like, you know. Punk rock, you know, the old AFI has a lot of bite to it, and uh, I dig those guys a lot. Uh, how about Fishbone, the reality of my surroundings? Kind of like funk, rock, slash metal. They've written some really good stuff. Uh, Cinderella's Long Cold Winter, I just listened to. Uh, the Fix, Reach the Beach, remember the 80s? It's kind of like the 80s, kind of new wave stuff, The Fix. If you like them at all. You know, one thing leads to another, everybody knows that that song, right? Uh, some old Pink Floyd, of course, I always throw Pink Floyd in here, there, I, the wall and momentary lapse of reason I've been spinning a lot. Uh, listen to White Lion's main attraction last night. That's a great record, man. That's such an underrated record. You know, I, I was just looking at the lineup on those old White Lions, you know, Mike Tramp, Beetle Brada, uh, James Lomenzo, who's now in Megadeth, uh, Greg D'Angelo on drums. Like they're just bunch of talented guys i don't think that you know they got lumped into the whole glam rock thing and i get that with the way they look but to me they were kind of like a step above in talent you know 
from like the fucking, you know, Britney Foxes and, and the poisons and the slaughters and all that stuff. So I, I really like the old white lion. You know, I always have actually. And, and uh, you know, I still do. You know, it's, it's, it's great stuff. Can't beat it. Uh, Fleetwood Mac, some of the old Fleetwood Mac, uh, the sticks first run dmc record i listened to this morning actually so yeah i'm all over the place man so as far as like non-metal stuff that's kind of what i've been listening to is for 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 non-metal so thanks for that question here's one from raphael underscore doom from upstate new york saw you talk about earth crisis is one of your other videos what are some are underrated hardcore bands that you recommend now oh, thanks for the question man yeah i've been listening to some Old Earth Crisis, I got that Firestorm EP that I showed you guys a little bit ago. That kind of like sparked my reinterest in Earth Crisis a little bit. And uh, here's one for you from the Netherlands. Now, they're not like maybe pure hardcore. Some of these bands might be, you know, hard, like metallic kind of hardcore. But I, I still kind of lump them into the whole hardcore genre. There's a really good one from the Netherlands called Born From Pain. So underrated. Great songwriters. They hit you hard. I love the production on their records. You know, they, they all sound a little different. Uh, great band. Check out Born From Pain, man. You won't be disappointed. Uh, Colt band from Connecticut, 100 Demons. Hardcore band. Absolutely killer. I think they only have two full lengths ever, but they're both fucking excellent. Uh, there's a band called God's Hate from California. They, they only have a couple records out. But uh, their claim to fame is Brody King, who's like a, a a wrestler, is the front man for that band. Like this beat down fucking hardcore, hit you hard, really good stuff. Check out God's Hate. Uh, here's a classic band that I've always liked, and that's Judge from uh, New York, New York Hardcore. I think they were formed like 86, 87 around there. I mean, check out Judge. You know, you're really going to like that. Uh Ringworm from Ohio. I've always been a fan of Ringworm, kind of that metallic hardcore. Uh, Wisdom and Chains from right here in PA, super underrated hardcore band. Um, you know, Terror too. I know Terror is pretty popular, but I mean, Terror is kind of like the West Coast version of Hatebreed, you know, here in the East Coast. And uh, Terror is fucking killer, man. Check out, check Terror out if you're not familiar. So yeah, there's some kind of hardcore slash metallic hardcore bands that I would recommend if you want to check them out. Thanks for that question. Here's one for my man Scott from Missouri. Scott, thanks for all the support, brother. I was listening to the sound of white noise today and was wondering what bands do you think made music either better or par with singers that weren't in the classic formation of the band? I really enjoy Bush era Anthrax. Owens Priest and Graves Misfits. Yeah, man, I like all that stuff. You know, I you know, I would much rather that the band get a new member and forge on than stop making music altogether. You know, uh, and the first band that comes to mind is Exodus. You know, with Rob Dukes, his era of Exodus is one of my favorite eras ever of any band ever. Like really, and as 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 big of a thrash fan as I am of the '80s stuff. I love the modern Exodus and all the Duke stuff. And I actually just saw Generation Kill like, you know, three weeks ago, a month ago at this club in New Jersey. And they were doing all Exodus covers from his era of the band. It was so much fun. You know, it was, uh, those those records mean a lot to me. I was totally engrossed in that era of the band and I loved every second of it. It was so good. So, yeah, the Rob Dukes era. And I, I love all the singers for Exodus, you know. I love Bailoff, I love Zetro, and I love the Duke's era too. So they're just they're all good. They're just different, you know. They every, every singer brought something different to the table. And uh like they're all gold in my book. I mean, I love it. Uh Bush era anthrax for sure. Yeah. I mean, I love the Bush era anthrax. I mean, I love the thrash anthrax more, but I mean John Bush has some great stuff with anthrax. Man, I talked about it in another video. Uh, Owens Priest, yes, I do like it. I thought Juggalayer was really strong. The one that came after that, maybe not so much, Demolition. But uh, I think I said it in another video, Juggalator, uh, Cathedral Spires. That track alone is worth the price of that record. It's so good. Go on YouTube, <clears throat> check out Judas Priest, uh, Cathedral Spires. I mean, it's it's an epic fucking track. I mean, he 
Ripper sings his ass off on that track. He's so good on it. Uh, Michael Graves, Misfits. Absolutely love that stuff, too. Again, different era for the band. I mean, it's kind of hard to compare him to Danzig. Uh, but um, I do like a lot of that stuff, you know. Dig up her bones, don't open till doomsday, speak of the devil. Like he's got some great, there was some great stuff in his era of the misfits, uh, no doubt. Um, what else did I write down here? Forrest Rob's Duke, Rob Duke's era Exodus. I like the Queen's Reich with uh, Todd Latour. I gotta be honest with you. I mean, I think the classic stuff is exactly that more classic and you know more recognizable than the stuff they're doing now. But uh, the, the Todd LaTorre stuff with Queensryche is actually pretty damn good. It's very progressive. Um, it's got some bite to it. I mean, I I, I do like the the modern Queensryche and what, what he's doing now with them. Uh, really good. He's He's been with them, what, since 2013? I think he's done four records with Queensryche now. And, uh, you know, I, I like that stuff a lot. I really do. Uh, Alice in Chains, you know, how do you, how do you replace Lane Staley? Uh, Jerry Cantrell and William Duvall do a pretty damn good job with the stuff that they've put out, you know, after Lane's passing. Um, they sound just like him, to be honest with you. And I think they share the vocal duties, if I'm not mistaken. And, you know, I dig the later era Alice in Chains a lot. Uh, of course, you know, I, I think of Dio and Black Sabbath. When Ronnie James Dio, you know, sung for Black Sabbath and replaced Ozzy, like I, you know, I, I love both eras really, but you know, I'm, I'm much more of a Dio fan, so I love those uh, Dio Sabbath records. I really do. So there's another favorite of mine. How about um, Iron Maiden? Uh, Bruce Dickinson replaces Paul Diano. I know there's some fans out there who like disregard anything after Killers. Like I can't, like it just blows my mind. Like yeah, I listen to Maiden. I only listen to the first two records. Holy shit! You're gonna discount all that stuff Maiden did with Bruce Dickinson in the '80s and early '90s. Like that just blows my mind. But there are metalheads like that. I actually know some of them, and I, you know. I just don't get it. I mean, I like the Paul Diano records too, but I mean, to discount all the Bruce Dickinson stuff, I mean, Jesus Christ. I, you know, and I don't, I don't agree with that. How about Candlemas? Uh, Messiah Marklin replacing Johan Lenquist. I know he's back with the band now, but the Messiah stuff was really fucking good compared to the Johan stuff. I think it's, you know, just as good. Both singers are great. And, uh, you know, those are all classic records in my book with, with those two guys. Uh, Dark Angel, you had Don Doty on the first two records and then Ryan Reinhardt on the second two records. I thought Ryan Reinhardt was, did a phenomenal job on, on those two records. He did what? Leaf Scars and Time Does Not Heal. I love Time Does Not Heal. It's great. Uh, everything about that record just kills. And of course, Darkness Descends with, uh, with Don as a fucking beast of a record. Uh, Halloween. Everybody knows Kai Hansen sung on the first record, and then on the second one you had Michael Kiske. That's the Halloween I grew up listening to, the Michael Kiske era. I remember listening to Keepers 1 and Keepers 2 as a kid, like walking to middle school and having those in my cassette Walkman, and I was just, I got lost in those old Halloween records. And, uh, you know, I like Kai Hansen as a singer, too, but Michael Kiske blows him out of the water. And then you had that era. Then you also had the Andy Dearest era of Halloween, too, which is actually really good. And now they're all members of Halloween. You know, Michael Kiske is back with Halloween. They got two singers now, plus Kai Hansen. Like, that's just that band is just unreal what they've morphed into. And to get Michael back in the band after all these years and the tour like that with two different singers and. I think that's cool as hell. It really is. And, uh, you know, I, I give props to Halloween, man. So as, as I was looking at these, I found ones that I thought made the bands worse. <laughs> I felt like I had to write them down. How about that Motley Crue record with John Karabi? I know people seem to like that one. I never did. I fucking hated it. You know, I, I really did. I, 
Uh, Van Halen with Gary Sharon, that Van Halen three record, it's just bad, you know, uh, just no good. NFG in my book, you know, I'm going to throw Maiden back in here as great as they were with, you know, Bruce Dickinson from Paul Diano. Then they went to uh, Blaze Bailey, nothing against Blaze Bailey, but, you know, I hate those two Maiden records that he did with them. X Factor and Virtual Eleven, right? I just don't, you know, I, like I don't even count them as part of this discography. I know that that sucks, but I just I can't listen to them. Like I just I'm sorry, like, I just can't. You know, like I I can't. So Scott, thanks for that question. Hope I answered it. I I rambled on there for a little bit, but uh, that's kind of like how I feel about some of those bands. So let me know what you think. Thanks for that question, brother. Here's one from Christian98. This is funny. Why do you curse so much in your videos? Do I really curse that much? Like, I don't feel like I do. Like, I, you know, I watch a lot of Gordon Ramsay. You know, I could watch Kitchen Nightmares on repeat all fucking day. And uh, that guy just curses this F, 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 F that. You know, he's calling people plonkers and twats and, you know, all kinds of stuff. And, uh, Nobody complains about him. So why the hell are you complaining about me? I don't think I curse that much. But yeah, like, you know, this is an adult show, right? It's not made for kids. So we're just I'm just kind of like being myself and having some fun. And if you think I curse too much, I. Sorry, go fuck yourself. I don't know what to say, but I'm just kidding. <laughs> Thanks for that question. But I do watch a lot of Gordon Ramsay. So there you go. That, that might be, have something to do with it. Uh, here's one from Ken in Michigan. Huge King Diamond fan here. What's your most underrated King Diamond record? Please do a King Diamond rank the records. Loving the content. Thanks. So appreciate that. I am working on another rank the records. It's not a King Diamond one. He does have a lot of records out. You'll know it when it's done. I'm going through them. The later stuff of his discography is you know, spotty, you know, so I'm just, I'm going through, I know the early stuff really well. I'm going through the later stuff, trying to figure out what I really like, what I really don't and ranking like the later part of that band's discography. So I might have that next weekend. If, if it's done, I'm taking my time with it and uh, see what happens. But uh, as far as King diamond records go, you know, underrated, You know, probably the graveyard. I think the graveyard is so underrated. Like, I think every song on that re on that on that record is good. I love the story. You know, it's like King Diamond. He witnesses the mayor of this town, uh, like molesting his young daughter, and like he's pissed off about it. And he like goes to tell somebody, and the mayor has him like committed to a sanitarium. And then King plots his revenge. I just think it's a cool story. I think the songs are good on it. You know, a lot of times, you know, in, a, you know, like a record like that, you know, King tends to focus on the story and more of the song writing. I think Voodoo is guilty of that. I think the, the story for Voodoo is really good. I just, I don't think the songs are that great on that one. But uh, this one, I, I absolutely do. I think the graveyard is fucking underrated and absolutely killer. And uh, I would recommend that one. Uh, that's probably most underrated uh, King Diamond record for sure. So there you have it. There's some questions. Thanks for hanging out with me on a Sunday at the Realms of Metal. Really appreciate it. Islanders are coming on in a little bit. Go Islanders and uh, have a killer week. Like I said, for me, it's going to only be a three-day week. And I'm off Thursday, Friday, and the weekend. So I'm looking forward to that. I really want to get, get out and see that new Ghostbusters movie, too. Hopefully we can make that happen sometime next weekend. So have a killer rest of your Sunday, and we'll see you guys again real soon.